much fun. Caring for a patient on a vent is the same as any, it will include the same care for patients who are bed bound. So let's say um, Ashling is, uh, what, for whatever reason, she's bed bound. So what are routine things you care for them? Turning, what else? Right, maintaining skin integrity. What else? Well, what about the vascular? Okay, so okay, yeah, so DVT precautions, right? And then um, uh, pre shared the uh, yeah, so maintaining um, uh, joint function mobility. Okay, so nothing different, and plus that will also prevent hypercalcemia. So routine. So the care mentioned here are exactly the same. So they because they will all sustain the same complications whenever we have a bedbound patient. So in addition, uh, of course, is um, the pneumonia now, okay? Because now we have a airway and uh, it's a plastic airway. Uh, so we are concerned with aspiration. So we did all the, how often do we suction again? As needed, okay? No, no routine suctioning, okay? Uh, if the patient, Let's say the whole 12 hours, you didn't see any indication for suctioning. Do you feel the need to, I have to suction? No. No, okay. They don't need it, then don't suction. All right. So here comes the mechanical ventilator. What the ventilators we have now, this is the modern age. Uh, prior to 1950, we had negative pressure ventilators. Uh, just, just a bit of history. You won't see these, well, probably you'll see the, them in museums, just part of history. Because what type of ventilators are we? Our, our structure, the human uh, structure. What are we, how is our, how, how are we breathing? Are we positive pressure ventilators or negative pressure ventilators? Positive uh, pressure. Our human body. Oh, no, we're negative okay, pressure. Sure. Okay, we are made, the yeah, human body is a negative pressure, pressure ventilator, right? So we have, um, we have, our diaphragm, which will contract down and it will suck air into the lungs. So that's why our breathing is passive, right? So we are, breathing comfortably right now, despite the positive pressure in the atmosphere. So we are comfortable, comfortably breathing because the, the, the diaphragm contracts down, air is simply sucked in. Okay, so none of you are even uh, thinking about breathing, right? It's all done for you by the autonomic nervous system. So these are the, we tried to mimic that. So earlier technologies were negative pressure ventilators. Okay, so we created a large cylinder, cylindrical chamber, put the patient in there with only the, the feet and the head sticking out, and it will create vacuum, mimicking the negative pressure that our chest, um, uh, that our chest has. So that's how ventilators used to be. Um, but imagine the cumbersome nature. We had to clean doo-doo, right? We, the patient has to eliminate. We have to check the patient. Although we do have holes here where you can handle, but I mean, how do you get the doo-doo out? So you still have to interrupt the therapy, which is not ideal because every time, let's say we do that uh, diarrhea, okay? So you have to interrupt the therapy several times. So not good. Then we discovered what we have today it, after the World War II. Now we have positive pressure ventilators now. So this is the modern ventilator. So forget the negative pressure. We still have them in small profiles. We have smaller machines now, which are negative pressure, but it still involves wrapping the whole body with a suit. Okay, we put them in like a body bag from head, head I mean, neck, neck down. So it still involves that. So again, not good. Negative pressure ventilators, are, are impossible to use, okay, practically. 
So we have positive pressure ventilators. With positive pressure ventilators, you, you have to have an airway. Is it possible to do positive pressure ventilation without a artificial airway? So now we have, we discussed the endotracheal tube or the tracheostomy. Uh, when do we switch to a tracheostomy again? If the therapy is needed for how long? For more than two weeks two or weeks more. Or so yeah. patient requires, other books will say 10 to 14 days, but the consensus, consensus is two weeks. So two weeks, you're still not better. You need long-term mechanical ventilation, switch to a tray, okay? It's easier because as long as you have an endotracheal tube, then you can't eat, right? You can't chew and swallow food. We have to sedate you in that process because you'll be very uncomfortable with a tube down your mouth. So let's stick with positive pressure ventilators. So this works by blowing positive pressure air into the patient's lungs. Of course, that will be that will require positive pressure because there is resistance, correct, imposed by the lungs. I mean, the size of the airway, the size of the alveoli, we have over 100 million alveoli. So those all, all those structures pose some resistance. So you need a certain amount of pressure to deliver that air into the patient's airway. And what, what is the role therefore of the airway, the endotracheal tube? What is it ensuring? We discussed this last week. What's the role of the airway? So let's look at your airway again. Well, the airway doesn't do that. The mechanical the ventilator mechanical will do that. Yeah. So we have the airway here. So what is it, what must it do? Because you have a machine right here. Ventilators here, circuits will be connected, and then it will blow the pressure in there. So what's the role of this? To make sure that pressure goes down and not. Okay, so that's why. Is it essential to ensure proper yeah. proper place? Yeah, yeah. okay, so that's very important. So two things again. What's the rationale of inflating that cup? Okay. You remember? Okay, no leaking, right? So air must go in and out only through that tube. Okay, what else? What's the other purpose? Stabilizing. Can this patient swallow? No, no. so they don't, it paralyzes so they the aspiration. Like, aspiration. And, and yeah, of course, we, the patient can swallow and then yeah. therefore no aspiration. aspiration. Okay. And then in a way, yeah, that will secure, but the cuff doesn't really secure. It's really the tape that we put up here, well, that's not tape. The commercial, the uh, yeah. the um, so call that it's commercial like tube holder. Okay, so we put around the mouth with with Velcro. That's yeah. what's holding the airway in. Okay, yeah, because the cuff is not like there's a, uh, yeah, there are claws there or it's nailed to there, so it will move. Okay, so it's really the the tube holder around the patient's uh, face. Okay, that's holding it. Well, the pressure ensures that it's sealed, okay? No leaking of air around it, but the, the secure uh, securement device is really what's holding it, right? So one of the items on the, I know um, Arling's head has already reviewed the blueprint. So one of the questions there is who needs a mechanical ventilator, right? So that's one of the questions. Who needs it, right? So who are mechanically ventilated? Okay, no, that's no, the tracheostomy. So here, so here are the indications in this paragraph. So who needs it? Indicated for including... Surgery, let's say a patient has a uh, long surgery, right? May uh, using general anesthesia. So when we do general anesthesia, along with that, we give them uh, muscle paralyzers, right? Which paralyzes the diaphragm. So patient can breathe. Yeah, only for major surgery. Yeah, so general anesthesia because we paralyze the every muscle, including the diaphragm. So patient can breathe, they require mechanical ventilation. Another is, Patients already having any uh, acute breathing. lung injury, yeah, any breathing problems, right? and they're expending so much energy breathing like this. How long can that patient last? No, so intubate. Okay, patients getting tired. They they they're expending too much energy, so no, you know, they not getting any rest. 
and and they're eventually gonna give up breathing. Yeah. You said that they're put on medications for when they're on tracheal. On uh, endotracheal tube, endotracheal intubation. Yeah, we have to sedate because uh, are you comfortable when you're yeah. awake and you have a tube down there breathing? No, we have to sedate you. Okay? On the track, you don't have to sedate. Trach, yeah, no need. No. <clears throat> Uh, and then, of course, you know, resting your diaphragm, rest your respiratory muscles, you know, all that accessory muscle use, nobody can last long. So if they're near exhaustion, okay, not just exhausted, but near exhaustion, we don't want to wait till the last minute, okay, patient stops breathing and then intubate. Right. So here are more indications. So respiratory failure, we discussed last week, ARDS, they require... With mechanical ventilation, right? And with mechanical ventilation again, we need an airway. Okay. So we already, I already discussed positive and negative. Forget the negative pressure. You won't see that in healthcare. We only have positive pressure ventilators now. So the iron lungs are the pictures I saw, I showed you earlier. So those were the huge chambers uh, we used. Um, well, I'm not old, okay? I didn't see those things. No, I, I'm, I'm in the positive um, pressure ventilator age. So let's, before we can look at the modes, let's look at the settings first. What is in a ventilator? What does the ventilator settings, uh, you know, what are in the settings? Okay, so we'll discuss that. Again, here are more indications. Put in a nice chart for you, chart 19-14. So select all that by. Very good, children. Yeah. Okay. So there are uh, many types of uh, how they work. So we've got volume cycled and we have pressure cycled uh, ventilators. Okay. And we also have a high frequency oscillatory support. So what are all of these? Uh, they're not really going to ask you in that detail. What they'll ask you is the, the settings on the vent because we're not really the respiratory therapist. So all we're, we need to do though is the basic. Settings. Yeah, so there's the basic settings on the vent and you're, we'll focus on your nursing responsibilities, your role. Okay. So should we know all of those? I'll discuss that. Okay. The... Um, usually we exhaust if the patient's deterioration is gradual or if the patient, let's say, has a DNR, DNI order, meaning do not intubate. That means we can't put in an airway. So the last positive pressure ventilator choice we have is the non-invasive, which is referring to a CPAP or a BiPAP. So in the hospital, we use the BiPAP. Okay. So the BiPAP will be your last resort. After that, Patient has DNI, that's all we can do. Uh, however, patient's full code, then if they do not tolerate the BiPAP, meaning we're not achieving our oxygenation goals for the patient, then we intubate, all right? So let's differentiate between CPAP and BiPAP. So CPAP <clears throat> stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. So therefore, since it's continuous, the pressure exerted by the machine does not change. So it will blow air, but this is not, this air, by the way, uh, this, this device is not a ventilator. Are we clear? This is not a ventilator. A ventilator is a sophisticated equipment. Uh, it's smart, okay? So you can program a ventilator way more than a CPAP. CPAP is simply a device you set the numbers, how much pressure you want, and it'll do that. So even if the patient is dead, it will continue to blow air. Okay, it won't give you any any warning. Okay, all it all it it's, it'll say is I'm blowing air. All right, that's it. It's not giving a breath per se. Okay, so it's different because in a, a ventilator will will give a breath and then pause, and then give a breath. Okay, you you have to tell the ventilator what to do though. So that will be on the settings. We'll discuss that shortly. So the purpose of CPAP is we have sleep apnea patients, but there's more indications to this besides that. So this will keep the airway open. That way, no airway structures, no mouth structures can obstruct the airway. So patient keeps breathing. BiPAP, 
contrary to CPAP, CPAP again, one pressure, single pressure. Doesn't matter whether the patient's inhaling or exhaling, same pressure is exerted throughout the respiratory cycle. BiPAP, on the other hand, because it's bi-level, so it will have a, let's say, the, the inhalation, the IPAP, uh, um, yeah, IPAP, inspiratory positive airway pressure is 15 centimeters of water. The EPAP, the expiratory positive airway pressure, can be five. Does that make sense? Okay, so higher pressure during inhalation and then lower pressure during exhalation. Why the difference? Because what are we doing when we're breathing? So if you need to exhale, do you want higher pressure? No, no, you want you want lower, okay, you want lower pressure during exhalation. So a BiPAP is a little bit more sophisticated than the C CPAP because this one will detect whether or not the patient is exhaling. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is also on the ventilator. The ventilator has a BiPAP function. Again, the ventilator is a computer, right? So you can set it to function as a BiPAP. It can do that. So it will, uh, in fact, the BiPAP setting on the vent is a way to wean the patient off the ventilator. Meaning a BiPAP will not work unless the patient is breathing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. A ventilator, however, will keep the patient breathing. If the patient's not breathing, it will give a breath. A BiPAP, on the other hand, will not work. Are we clear? Because the, the, the pressure is triggered by the patient's breath. Okay. Uh, so if there's nothing coming out, then exactly right. right. Yeah. So if so the patient doesn't breathe, what what why would they give any pressure? There's no. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So here, BiPAP again will give higher pressure during inhalation, lower pressure during exhalation. Okay, making the breathing, the ventilation, um, comfortable. Okay. Uh, just something I want to clarify first. You understand oxygenation and ventilation from last week, right? When we discussed respiratory failure, you know the difference. So the gas exchange is the actual exchange of gases. Ventilation is the inhalation and exhalation. Okay, so two parts of oxygenation. There's the gas exchange, which is the internal uh, ventilation. Yeah, and then we have the external ventilation, which is the inhaling and exhaling. Okay, just make sure you know the terms. All right, so let's go to modes. For our purpose, we will only use the, we will only discuss three ventilatory modes. I have not received any complaints from graduates that come back, oh, they tested this on this. No, so three most common, it's always most common. So just like, but what blood products did we discuss and test? Fresh frozen. Fresh Fresh okay, so three most common. Same thing. So we'll do the three most commonly used modes. So tendency is when you go to a hospital uh, on your first uh, assignment, so you'll see these three modes most frequently. All right. And they are assist control, SIMB, and then PSV. Again, assist control. SIMB, which is synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. And then finally, uh, PSV. The third one is uh, used in ARDS. Right. Yeah, so only three, AC, SIMB, and PSV. Now let me explain these, what you're looking at on figure 19-8. So these are waves. Okay, now you'll see that um, when, uh, so this is volume. So the vertical axis is volume. So that's uh, referring to volume of air. Okay. Then the horizontal axis is uh, time. All right, how many seconds? So a ventilator does what? It gives a breath, right? Okay, so you have to tell the patient, the, the ventilator what to do. You have to choose a mode and then you, you enter the settings. First setting we need to know is the tidal volume, which is the amount of air that, that you want the vent to give. 
hospitals, most hospitals use volume uh, according to the patient's weight, uh, which is about six to eight mLs per kilogram, which to me, I really don't understand why they use that because for me, it should really be the height because the, the volume in your lung, is it determined by your weight or your height? For me, really, yeah. So let's say the same height as me. But then I'm, let's say, I'm proud to say I'm under 160 now. <laughs> so yeah, height of the pandemic, I was 180. Uh, <laughs> well, I became diabetic too, so this uh, explains why. Okay, anyway. Um, so me, one, 160, and then somebody same height as me, 240. Don't tell me we have the same lung yeah. volume, yeah, no. right? Because now you added more adipose tissue, more body weight to that patient. So is the lung has more capacity or less? Plus all the abdominal pressure. Of course, that's less, right? <clears throat> but anyway, who am I? So most hospitals still use weight, in kilograms to calculate. So six to eight mLs per kilogram per hour. And that's of course for the both lungs, correct? Okay, so you're you're throwing that, the ventilator will, will uh -huh. blow that into both lungs. Make sense? Okay. So therefore, why did we have the where should the tip of the airway again? Where should it sit? Above C something. How far from the crinum? Okay, so does it make sense now? Why is it there? Why not into the right main stem bronchus? Okay, we need that tidal volume to go to both lungs, not just to one. You understand? All right. So these waves, when you see this one here, that's volume, correct? So this is the ventilator. When you see this, that's the ventilator pushing air. It will go up and then it will just stop. It will stop giving the air and then the patient will, will exhale on their own. Okay, the ventilator is not programmed. It cannot suck air out. Are we clear? It can only blow air in. Okay, it does not do anything during exhalation. The patient, the patient will exhale on their own. You understand? Okay, so this axis here, this line here is zero pressure, okay? Because why? So therefore, why is the uh, wave upward, Jessica? I'm not sure I'm not gonna lie to you. No, so when the, I said that when the ventilator gives a breath, it will show like this on the graph, like mm -hmm. Oh, why is it going? Is, going up. is it positive or negative? Positive. Positive, right? And okay. Exhaling is negative. The Correct, pressure. okay. So I'll show you. I'll show you what a patient's breath will look like. If the patient initiates the breath, what kind of ventilators are we? So when we initiate the breath, does it go up or down? It, goes down. it will dip slightly. Okay, so there will be like a negative. Yeah, so it's about one point, negative 1 1.5 pressure or more uh, or, or less, sorry, it shouldn't be more. 1.5 uh, centimeters or less pressure. So that's enough trigger. <laughs> when I do this, so the pressure will drop. So if I am on connected to a ventilator, so I'll see a dip. All right. So I'll see a dip. Correct. So when you're looking at a graph like this, what are you? What are they? What are you looking at? What are you? To see they're breathing on their own. Okay. So you can see. Oh, this is a vent breath. This is a patient breath. All right. Yeah. So therefore, when it dips a little bit, that means who initiated that breath? The vent or the patient? Patient. So I'll explain, we'll discuss shortly uh, what type of modes and then why Just you'll see a positive, uh, correct, all right? All right, so uh, you follow so far? Yeah. All right. So let's uh, finish the setting. So we discussed tidal volume. So that's one of the settings you put. You tell the ventilator, okay, give my patient, uh, we calculated, okay, so give them 350, okay, with each breath. However, um, please take note that even though the ventilator will is programmed to give 350, for instance, doesn't mean the patient will get 350, all right? Because if the pressure is too high, will the ventilator force that 350? Yeah. Will the ventilator say, I'm ordered to give 350? Whether you like it or not, you're going to get 350. 
Is it going to do that? No. No, because it will rupture the patient's lung. So if it meets a certain pressure, and then that next setting is now the PIP, okay? peak inspiratory pressure. So the doctor needs to set that. So the doctor will estimate, okay, based on the patient's condition, let's say ARDS, COVID pneumonia. So he'll es estimate the peak inspiratory pressure. So he'll order that as well. Okay, set this as the uh, PIP, PIP. Okay, set the PIP uh, uh, at so much pressure, right? So that's the second setting. Next is, well, how many breaths do you want me to give? Okay, so ventilator has to know how many breaths. So therefore, if it's uh, on a vent, typically it starts around 12, uh, depending on where we're at at the therapy. Right. So when we are weaning, meaning the patient's getting better, right? So they're breathing more on their own. So do we think, do you think you tell the ventilator to give more or less breath? Yes. Okay. So as we're nearing weaning, we'll program the, we'll change the setting. So the rate is also called F frequency. So frequency rate, depending on the brand of the ventilator your hospital is using. So it's either F, which is frequency or R, which is rate. Okay. That's referring simply to the number of breaths per minute. Now, there's also something called minute ventilation, which is not on the vent, but you're calculating minute ventilation, which is basically RR times tidal volume, correct? Yeah, so that's it. So you, your minute ventilation will be, uh, what is the tidal volume and how many breaths are there? Multiply that, that's your minute ventilation. And then sometimes don't they add like peak to it? Like, yeah, like well, we're high. getting to that, oh, okay. okay. I'll go back to the modes. I'll finish the settings first. So we discussed the tidal volume. And then we have the FiO2. Okay, FiO2 is how much oxygen percentage do you want? Now, the thing about FiO2 is there's something, um, because how much FiO2 are we breathing right now? Meaning how much FiO2 is our, are our lungs accustomed to? 22, 21. 21. Oh, so room air is 21% oxygen. That means, you don't receive oxygen. right. So when I'm breathing, I just took in 21% oxygen. So what's the rest? What is the 79% made of? Okay, so that's mostly CO2. No, sorry, mostly nitrogen. Okay. Yeah, so about almost 70% nitrogen. Uh, uh, 20 something uh, CO2 and then yeah a little bit of uh, fart okay so different gases okay so that's what I'm breathing every time so therefore a high FiO2 is that necessarily good for a patient no we try to limit the FiO2 so doctors are wary about giving 100% uh, FiO2 because the, let's say, uh, imagine, okay, so this is, um, let's say this mouse is an air sac. So if I give 21% oxygen, so 21% will diffuse, correct? So the air, 21% oxygen enters the sac. So 100 million of these. 21% oxygen comes in and that oxygen it diffuses into my capillaries, right? And then meanwhile, CO2 will also diffuse out, right? By osmosis, right? Um, oh no, sorry, by uh, diffusion. Uh, yeah, diffusion, which is movement of from uh, area of greater to, yeah. So therefore, when 21% diffuses in, what's in the air sac? What's left in there? Nitrogen. Okay, so there's nitrogen, some, some part, and CO2. So will the air sac ever collapse? No. It can't because there's it's the still filled with there. gases there. All right. Okay. So imagine if I give 100% FiO2. When that 100% diffuses yeah. into the capillary, yeah, the what's left here? Right. Not Nothing. What will happen to the 100 oh, million? It will collapse. So is it good yeah. to give FiO, high FiO2? No. no. So whenever we have high FiO2, um, Miss Boyd just mentioned about PEEP, okay? PEEP, so what is PEEP? Let's go straight to the PEEP first. 
uh, right here. So what is P? This is positive and expiratory pressure. So uh, let me go back to the graph. You see how the pressures, I said the line is zero, correct? This is zero pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's positive, this is negative, all right? So therefore, where did the uh, pressure go at the end of exhalation? So this is inhalation. This is PIP, the inspiratory pressure, and this is expiratory pressure. PIP and expiratory pressure. What is the pressure? At the end of exhalation pressure. Is it the line? Yeah. So what is what pressure do you see there? No, negative. Zero, zero. Right? Zero. Yeah. Correct. So normally the pressure, not the volume, of course there's volume, but the pressure goes to zero normally. When we use high FiO2, is it good to maintain it at zero? No, because the airway will collapse, collapse if there's no gas, no pressure there. So therefore, PEEP, that's what PEEP is. So the higher your FiO2, we tend to increase the PEEP because we don't want the airway to collapse. So therefore, um, the yeah, so ventilators has to have a PEEP. So the minimum is five. You can go 10, you can go 15, but we never go 20. Are we clear? So 15, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, I should never say never. We, we do give patients, critical patients, uh, as high as 20 PEEP. Those are really, you know, really wet lungs, but not for a long time because you also sacrifice cardiac uh, output because venous venous return is will is compromised because what are you we're supposed to again under normal conditions the pressure and expiratory pressure goes to zero correct yes it's supposed to be zero so therefore the higher the peak that means this line here will we'll be around up. here so that means uh when i'm inhaling so day to day minute second by second when i do this what's happening to venous return if both my lungs are inflated, I'm squeezing the heart, correct? But that's okay. That's only for a moment, right? And then I exhale. Lungs, yeah, lungs uh, relieve pressure from, from my heart. My venous return increases. Cardiac output is maintained. Now, so therefore, if you give the patient really high peeps for a long period of time, what's happening to venous return? It's decreasing you're going to sacrifice cardiac output. Oh, so it's also dangerous yeah. to use. Yeah. So that's why our PEEP usually is at five. Again, we can go higher if the patient, yeah, if the patient has a really non-compliant, really wet, you know, very uh, stiff lungs, we need higher PEEP for those patients. Okay. But not too high though. When we, Whenever you have a patient that's on really high PEEP, make sure you update the doctor. Okay, so hey, we've been on 20 peep for two days. No, we never we go. Yeah, only a few hours. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. So, but, uh, what, I was like, what was your blood pressure? If it's too high. If it's too yeah, high. but five, that's great. Because five, the depends. No, yeah, your heart okay. wouldn't even notice that. Yeah. So the more hemodynamically stable, uh, unstable patients, you should watch the peep. Okay. So we know the FiO2. Uh, we'll watch the peak inspiratory pressure. We'll, um, it will give you alarms when, when this is reached uh, too often. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll discuss this uh, um, in the upper paragraphs because this is just a mention. Okay, uh, It's not really discussed here. Sensitivity. Sensitivity is also a trigger. So you call it sensitivity or you call it a trigger. Um, doctors, respiratory therapists, will, nurses will use either term. Okay, what's the trigger or the uh, sensitivity? Um, here, it's usually two negative, okay, two negative two millimeters of mercury. This is again the, because the vent has to know when to give a breath, right? Okay, so there are certain modes 
we're in the um uh, maybe I should explain this so you understand the trigger. Okay. <clears throat> so um what mode and settings we decide to use really depends on the work of breathing. Right now, who's doing the work of breathing? We are. You are, right? Or technically your brain. Okay? Yeah. yeah, we're not really exerting any effort now. So once you're sick, say you got COVID, what happens to your work of breathing? It increases. It increases. It increases. Right? Yeah, because you're now exerting more effort, right? So therefore, depending on how sick the patient's lungs are, will depend who does the work of breathing. How much? The, the vent or the patient? If you're dividing it, obviously, here, right? Because the patient's intubated and on a vent ventilator, you have to, the doctor has to decide, how much work would, do I let the patient do? How much work do I give to the ventilator? You understand so far? Okay. So depending on the work of breathing, of course, that's decided based on, it's always based on the patient's needs, right? What do they need? Okay. And then you decide on how much work of breathing it is. Now, there are vents that are on control mode. Again, we're not testing that. Uh, control mode is used in OR. Okay. So let's say Jessica's uh, having brain surgery. Okay, so she's intubated and uh, so she's given muscle paralyzer, right? So her diaphragm's not working at all. So the vent will 100% work of breathing, the vent. It's okay because she's paralyzed, right? So she'll be comfortable. She doesn't even know what's going on, yeah. right? So the vent is 100%. So that's control mode. And you do that on any other patient no. who is not Paralyzed. So so Correct. Will it com be comfortable for a patient who's not paralyzed? So no. automatically just not, to no. be on that mode. No. Mm -mm. Jessica will be fighting. Right. She'll be most com uncomfortable. What the fuck is this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Brain is still working. Yeah, because she, she, she's yeah, she's programmed to breathe. But then the vent is not doing anything at all. The vent is saying, no, I'm programmed on control mode. I'm in charge. I am God. You get a breath when I say you get a breath. Right. So will this work on any other patient that's not paralyzed? No, no it will not work. Yeah. Yeah. Sedation. Yeah. And then the um, you heard of um, uh, midazolam, right? Yeah. Okay. What like a uh, no, we uh, will discuss that. We'll go to the, uh, so if it's really um, in the OR, okay? So yeah. the only place you'll see the control yeah. mode oh. is in the OR. Any other floor, you won't see control, all so right? What about somebody with like ALS? Uh, those, yeah. So those will be on, um, well, they will actually do okay on AC. I'll explain why. Like I said, only you'll see control mode only in the OR. Okay. So what is the trigger? The trigger is the vent's cue. So if the mode is, let's say, assist control or SIMV or PSV, uh, no, not PSV. P PSV, we don't need uh, a trigger. So only on AC and SIMV. So those two modes allow the patient to breathe. All right, so the patient is breathing spontaneously. The vent has to know when the patient is breathing spontaneously. So that is now where the trigger comes in. All right, so if the, if the ventilator senses a negative pressure coming from the patient's airway, that's the, the ventilator's trigger. Ah, uh, patient's trying to take a breath. Does that make sense? Yeah. So unless the patient exerts enough negative pressure, so if they, let's say they only exist uh, exerting one, one millimeter, will the vent sense that? No. no. Vent was told two millimeters. Oh, okay. Only one? Uh, oh. Yeah. So the vent yeah. say, oh, that's not a trigger. Okay. My trigger is two. So Yo. if that breath is too weak. Nothing. Like trigger basically is like when your body triggers a breath, basically. Your diaphragm, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we have to set the right. Yes. So how much 
the how much trigger. So let's say the doctor wants to help the patient now. Okay, the patient can't. Oh, this is for weaning. Uh, no, not yeah. necessarily. Okay. Not, not necessarily for weaning. So this is during a regular therapy. So if the patient's too weak, the doctor may decide, okay, just put the trigger at 1.5 or let's say one millimeter. But usually it's 1.5 minimum, two, 1.5 to two, all right? So that's sensitivity. Um, so this is for, we don't need to know this. Uh, that's the RT. Okay, FiO2. Again, that's the oxygen concentration that, that you put on the vent. And okay, and since these patients are sedated, most of them, we need to evaluate their response to therapy using objective means, okay? Because there's no subjective, right? I mean, patients unconscious. So therefore, we look at ABGs. So you draw ABGs, don't worry, you can draw it yourself because there is an arterial line, all right? At least when you're in ICU. Outside ICU, we don't see arterial lines. So you'll have to call RT, all right, or the resident. Any questions on the settings? So we know the, the vent has to be told how much tidal volume, how many times to give the breath, um, how much is the trigger, FiO2, P, and the um, trigger. Yeah, we did the trigger already. Uh -huh. uh, we did peep, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. the peak, right? The yeah peak of peak inspiratory peak. pressure. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the mode. Let's go back up. I had to go to the setting first because when they mention the settings here in the modes, then we won't make sense. It won't make sense. Okay, so now we're on the modes. Okay, so let's start with. Assist control. Assist control is also called continuous mandatory ventilation CMV. CMV, assist control, the same thing. All right. Now, the how it functions is on the name. Assist control, meaning it assists the patient with breathing. That means is the patient allowed to breathe? Yeah. Yes, yeah. because it assists. However, it, it maintains a certain level of control. Let me explain what when this assists and this when this control happens, okay? So here, the description is, uh, by the way, CMV is uh, most likely the first mode that the patient, every patient outside the OR will be on. So let's say you're in RDS, respiratory failure, pneumonia, whatever, or you code it. Okay, you, you went into cardiac arrest. The first mode you'll be on is AC. It's always AC, okay? With the least of it. Okay, so what does this do? Here's the description. It delivers a preset tidal volume and a preset rate. Again, what's preset in AC? The tidal volume. Right here, what, what is preset? The tidal volume and, and the pressure of the rate. No, it's it's tidal volume or pressure. Oh, or pressure. And what is the other preset? The rate. Okay, so it's pre it's it's ordered to give a minimum number of breaths at a minimum amount of tidal volume. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the two things preset in the AC mode. The tidal volume and the rate. Yep. So that means, like clockwork. Let's say the the rate is set at 12 breaths per minute and the tidal volume is 350. What's going to happen? Minute by minute. The preset is, let's say, the preset rate is 12, 12 mm -hmm. breaths per minute. And then the tidal volume is 350. What's going to happen every minute? 12 breaths. 12 breaths. So therefore, every how many seconds will the vent deliver the tidal volume? 12 seconds. Uh, um, 60 divided by 12 oh, every five, five seconds. seconds whether the patient likes it or not the patient will get 350 ml every five seconds do you understand yeah okay under what mode 
AC. AC control, assist control, the ventilator will give a breath every five seconds, 350 each time. All right. Okay. So that's good for a sick patient, right? The sick patient won't complain. They'll be comfortable at this moment. Oh, thank you, because I can't breathe. Okay, thank you for breathing for me. However, will this patient stay bad forever? They're going to get worse. Oh, cool. Well, could get worse or better, but we're hoping it will get better, right? Okay, so when they do get better, does the patient now initiate some breaths? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that could be good or that could be a problem. Depends. Look at this. Look at the however statement. If the patient initiates a breath between the machine's breath, the ventilator delivers the preset tile volume. Meaning, let's say, <clears throat> Jessica. Oh, okay. okay, so she OD'd. Be even more. Okay, so because, you know, yeah. let's say, you know, we, we split. Well, okay, we yeah. ended our relationship. You're not taking it well. So you took some so colace. Yeah, some yeah. colace. <laughs> you OD'd on colace. That's the only thing you had at home. <laughs> yeah. Holy. 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 It wasn't even hers, it was her grandma. <laughs> now she's getting better. She's taking her own breaths now, every in between in, in between those five seconds. So she's taking a breath. She's trying. And then she met the trigger. Let's say trigger was two millimeters. So she met the trigger. She's she started. What will the vent do? It will give her. So the preset, like the preset tidal volume. She has no say on how much tidal <laughs> volume she wants. She initiated it. However, she cannot determine the tidal volume because the, the, the vent is on AC. Under AC, yeah, you can breathe, but you can't decide how much, how much, how much yes. tidal volume. When I breathe, right, and then I my tidal volume off of spontaneous breaths is more than 350, then what's going to happen? You're gonna get too much, so that's why they well, I guess seven hundred. Hold on, hold on. Again, focus on what's happening. Okay. okay. These are vent breaths, right? Mm-hmm. Vent breaths. Yeah. Every five seconds, clockwork. If Jessica breathes in between, so it will like be like this, right? Mm -hmm. So she initiated it. So you see a negative trigger. The vent will give her another three fifty. So she's never gonna Every reach that flat line. Right? No. She has no say on the tile volume. Even if you think you wanted 200 or 100, mm -mm, you're going to get 350. <laughs> under so AC, again, good. under AC, okay. what does the vent control? Tile volume. volume. The patient is, the only thing that, the, that Jessica can control is the frequency of the breath. She can add to the 12. Right. She can breathe more than 12. Yeah. Okay, she can contribute some. But she cannot control the tidal volume. What is that no way. I mean, uh, hyperventilate. Yeah, that's what you meant. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Correct. So look at the uh, comp I mean, disadvantage of this type of ventilation. There will be respiratory alkalosis. There will be hyperventilation in this mode. All right. So that's the bad thing about assist control. Because this is programmed and ideal for what type of patient? A sick patient. Is this going to work on a patient that's already better? No. We can't. Okay, so this is now, uh, you know, just this, this start. Okay, so let's say Johnny also okay, uh, started bad COVID pneumonia. So we'll put him on AC. Of course, Johnny got better. Can we keep him on AC? No. No, he's not going to like it. Okay, it's not appropriate for Johnny. He's exactly. getting better. He's taking more breaths. So when we do, what are the indications that this is no longer appropriate for, for Johnny or for Jessica? Meaning fighting the vent, right? Yeah. yeah, that's one. Or what would be our objective evidence? Uh, respiratory alkalosis, right? So we draw a VG. Shows respiratory alkalosis. Only re one reason for that. She's breathing more. The vent. If you look at the minute ventilation, oh my God, this is now the minute ventilation when you calculate it. So, which is again, how do you calculate minute ventilation? 
RR, RR per minute times the tidal volume. So if it exceeds how many thousands of milliliters, then it's not appropriate now. Okay. okay? So obviously the conclusion we get is Jessica and Johnny are oh, getting are. better. So we call the doctor or the RT. Well, the, we need to call the doctor anyway because the doctor has to, yeah, okay the switch. Any question on AC? Okay, let's keep it simple like that. Let's go now to the second. That was AC. Oh, that was simple. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So you know how AC works. Yes. Okay. So again, minimum, there because there's two things preset. Tidal volume, rate, clockwork, they get it. Patient, can the patient add to the number of reps? Yes. yes. Can she decide, he or she decide tidal volume? No. no. They will get, yeah, they will get the tidal volume that the, so what is preset. So basically, respiratory alkalosis is like an indicator no longer needing AC. Correct. Okay. Yep. Let's go to the next one, SIMV. Now, this is also the same. Look, what also is preset here? Same thing, right? Just like AC, because this is also a volume mode. So AC or CIMV and um, SIMV um, are both volume modes. So they both have a preset tile volume, preset rate. However, the rate here is a little bit lower than um AC. ac so ac always starts at, at least 12 or most of the time it's 14 okay 12 14 and go up from there here this can be around 10 or less again how much 10 or less because here look at here and here's the difference between the two what did they say here between where's the however so here it says, however, if the patient initiates a breath, what will the vent do? Give the preset tile volume. Here, the difference here is in SIMV, between breaths, the patient breathes spontaneously. What will happen? The vent will leave them alone. If it's your breath, have at it. Yeah, so here, does the vent give the preset tile volume? Not at all. It will leave you alone. That's your breath. Go ahead. That's why it's called synchronized because the patient is left alone. Basically, yeah, patient, breath, yeah, patient's breath. Yeah, patient's breath. Go. Yeah, go ahead. It's your breath. But if it's my breath. Yep. So now, when when it's the vent's breath. Can she decide? No, no. because that's the bent bent breath. So she'll still get three fifty. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called. But when it's hard, yeah, so synchronized. Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, something uh, we also miss to emphasize here is here the it's can the can the vent deliver less than the preset rate? Mm -hmm. no. no. So that's why it results in it's respiratory alkalosis. Mandatory, yeah. right? right. So that's why there's a resulting hyperventilation okay, in, in, in AC. Here, what's something even better here in SIMB is, let's say you set it to deliver 10, right? If it already sees that the patient with, with the patient's spontaneous breath, that they've already met the minimum, it won't have to give the preset okay. rate and tidal volume. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Meaning it will take it into account. Okay, you gave one. Okay, that's okay. So you will the patient here will never get hyperventilation right. because the, it's synchronized. Cor correct. Because the patient's vent, the vent is program 10, right? But then the patient is now taking 10 of so her own. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, no more. Yeah. So how will we know if the patient went bad on SIMV? Because the machine will giving, the breath. what type of um, ABG result will you get acidosis. if she goes to acidosis? You'll see the CO two will start rising. Yeah. Let's say because if she, um, let's say, uh, let's say the patient was consistently getting better, right? And then the doctor kept okay. Let's keep dropping the rate. 
Okay, let's say let's we're give her six now. CO2 in yeah, so let's say let's let's say give her six because she's already taking what? 14 every minute. Yeah. Give her six. Okay, six on the vent. So if she stops breathing, meaning the patient, I uh, mean the vent will only give six because that's all that's preset because she stopped breathing. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah, that's dangerous. So those are yeah. signs of hypertension. I have a, mm -hmm. I have a question. And, yeah. So if I don't meet the tidal volume that the machine is set, would it give the tidal volume? Uh, again, the tidal volume, yeah, uh, if it's your breath, okay. whatever you want. You can have more or less tidal volume. You're the boss if it's your breath. With the synchronized volume. Yeah, with meaning mode. Yes. Okay. Synchronized mode. <laughs> Okay, last one, and this one will be quick, and then I'll let you go. The PSV. PSV. PSV is not a volume mode. Unlike AC and SIMV, which are volume modes, what do volume modes always have preset? And rate. Okay. Uh, and you know the difference, right? Yeah. Okay. So PSV has no preset tile volume, no preset rate. So therefore, is this giving any breath at all? No. Not at all. So which patient will this work on? A spontaneously breathing patient. So is this a so is this a main vent mode? This is support pressure. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this a main vent mode or is this no, a weaning mode? It's a weaning mode. Is this exclusively a weaning mode? Yes. Are we clear? Yeah. Because this does not give any breath at all. No tile volume, no rate. Correct. So it's mainly giving pressure support. It does have a preset pressure. That's it. The only thing you can preset here in this mode is pressure. You can increase and decrease the pressure depending on how the patient's doing. All right. So a patient's not doing well yet, you still have high pressure, getting better. You can lower that pressure. Okay, so that's why it's called pressure support. You're simply just pushing a little bit. Okay, so that's like the spotter at the gym. Okay, so you have, you know, that spots you with the weight. Yeah, so spots you, right, helps you. So that's PSB. But you're doing the lifting yourself. Okay, then the spotter is not going to lift it for you. So same idea here. Patients getting ready to be weaned, you just need a little bit of support. You're not quite ready to be extubated yet? Push. Okay, yeah. Question, this is the ventilator, um, the ones, the two earlier ones, you choose the hospital? Okay, we never decided. Okay, that's the doctor. I'm just trying to help you because that way you can support the doctor's decision. Okay, because okay? you're still responsible for your patient. Okay. So that's why at least you, you understand how these things work. Okay, what mode is the patient in? Yeah, SIMB actually is also used as a, a, a weaning mode. Yeah. You, you can even combine it. You can do both because yeah. you can do two modes at a time. You can do SIMB and PSV at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, but again, only on a spontaneously breathing patient. Because this does not give any so any breath at all. On their own. They right. Get... Yeah. PSV has no preset rate, no preset tile volume. So therefore, it's not giving any breath. Zero. Zero breaths. Only giving support. Pressure support. So it's helping with tidal volume. With Yeah. So I that mean, the patient can... Uh, give you know, a little more. They need a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meaning, yeah, they're breathing on their own, but they're not that strong. Breath. You know, their diaphragm's not little that little. not that strong. So a little, a little weak, maybe the breath's a little shallow. shallow. So this will mm -hmm. help supplement that. So the patient from the OR, like if they had a massive brain surgery, they'll be on the AC. Again, during the surgery, it's control mode. Control mode. Yeah. Remember, because we give a muscle so paralyzer. We give them succinylcholine. Okay, that paralyzes yeah. the entire body, the diaphragm yeah. included. So they can't breathe. It's so impossible. when they come out the OR, like if they have like a, a massive like craniotomy, right? Uh -huh. And they need to stay intubated, like 
what do they what mode do they want? oh while in the yeah, uh like, vacuum yeah why they reach yeah so they'll be on ac they'll go to ac yeah. once they drop okay because the moment you stop the infusion of the succinylcholine, yeah. they'll start the muscle function start will the will return. So their yeah. diaphragm and start yeah. function. Okay. Yeah. So these drugs are only short acting. Let's say anesthesia, succinylcholine, which is the muscle paralyzer. They're short acting. So the moment you stop, then the effects will go away. Right. I Okay, so I'll see you at one o'clock. This takes so much time. Yeah, the lecture was short. The what? So much time. Well, this is only mechanical ventilation. We still have. Oh, big questions, Professor. I have a question for you. So I just want to make sure everything on the blueprint that's going to be on the test, like because SLE is not on the blueprint for the final. Yeah. Then. Heat and emer heat and um cold emergencies as well. Because Huntington's was on it was on exam three. How many do? It was like two, three questions. Very easy. It was easy for... questions. So if I see anything on the final, I could fight against that because I will. The, my life is on the line, Professor. This is why I'm asking. Yeah, just her life is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> so only the stuff on the blueprint. They, yeah, they have the screen. Um, oh, yeah, you can't keep promise. They won't see the blueprint. If you're willing to drop the moisture, the lowest spirit for a quiz, or even give us two points extra. If you don't want the current grade, I can put it to zero. That's it. That's all I can do. Right, because I'm going to get straight answers. So I can put it in my example. Yes, if you did live. It is like.